My name is Amanda. I have an encouraging word for you guys today. This word is coming out of James chapter 1 verse 17 and it roughly says every good and perfect gift comes from the Father above. It's a really good verse. There's more to that verse. The emphasis though is that every good and perfect gift comes from God. He is a giver of good gifts a giver of good gifts. So the Lord's heart today for us is to understand why we don't receive the things that we ask for in prayer. As far as it relates to things that we're asking for ourselves or things that we're asking as a gift from him. Oftentimes God will give us gifts because he's a good father and he desires to bless his children. Other times he puts things in our hearts to ask him for and then he does that for a purpose. He wants to test our faith. He wants to strengthen our faith. He wants us to pursue relationship with him and this is all part of it, right? Then there are times when we ask things of the Lord from a place within us that is not quite completely purified in him and our motivation is not completely good and we ask him for these things and expect him to respond and then he does not respond. The Lord wants us to understand that he is focused in, tunnel focused in on our hearts. He's focused in on our hearts because if he can capture our hearts, he can have an individual that is in love with him, that will pursue after him, that will be fully obedient to him, and then he can use that individual to reach out to other people for his name and for his glory. We have to understand that God is looking at the heart behind the asking of what we are asking him for. For example, if we ask him for a spiritual gift so that we can further his kingdom, God give me the gift of evangelism, for example, and we give him a bunch of lip service. I'm going to use this to advance your kingdom, God, and to glorify your name and to to reach people that don't know you. But the intention though in our heart, the motivation behind our heart, God, he's able to look past the lip service and see into our hearts and see where we are asking out of, the place in our heart that we're asking out of. If it's a pure motivation or a motivation to just make ourselves known, make a name for ourselves or to have status, anything for for vain reasons or for selfish ambition, he sees that. He sees that and he's not unwilling to give us good things, but because he's so after our hearts and he wants our hearts to be in pursuit of him, only worshiping him instead of idolizing what we're asking for, what he will do is allow us to go through circumstances or go down a specific road so that we are made aware of the condition of our own heart behind the asking of what we're asking him for in order for us to come to him and to not be condemned, but to be gently corrected, then ask him to come in and clean that part of our heart out to purify it, to give us the right motivation, to place within us a heart that's of him and not something that's from our our flesh, but a heart that is truly of him. That's one reason why we're not receiving things either in the timing that we think we need to receive them or we're not receiving them at all because he's looking at the heart behind what we're asking for. Another thing that he is also looking at is are you asking in faith or are you being double-minded. That same chapter does talk about double-mindedness. When we are asking of something, we shouldn't allow ourselves to be tossed back and forth in the waves like like an, like the ocean, right? Let me say that again. When we ask the Lord for something, we shouldn't ask half-heartedly saying, I want this, but I'm not truly believing that God is a God that will respond to me. And so there's a double-mindedness in that asking. God delights in faith. He delights in our faith and belief that he's going to respond to our asking. So sometimes we're asking for things, but we don't fully believe that he's going to follow through with it. That could be a defense mechanism. I'm going to ask for this, God, but I'm not going to put all of my eggs in one basket and believe that you're going to respond. I'm going to hold back a little bit and have a justification of why you're not going to answer this this prayer. So therefore, you're being double-minded. You're not fully trusting him. You're holding back because you are you are actually afraid. You're afraid that God is not going to care for you the way that he promises in scripture. You're putting your faith in him, providing it a little bit, and then you're also putting your faith in him not providing it. And so then you're double-minded. That doesn't honor or please the Lord. The heart needs to be corrected in that as well. Another reason why is they don't actually believe they are worth receiving good things from God or from anybody because of past trauma, past difficult situations, because the pattern is I haven't received anything good. So why all of a sudden is God going to start giving good things to me? There might might be a place in their heart that says, I don't have value. I'm not important. God overlooks me. He looks at everybody else instead of me. And then, you know, we fall into kind of this victim mentality.
mentality, which I talk a lot about on, on my ministry online. So check that out. But if you don't think that you have worth or value that he loves you and that he desires to give those things to you, then in the asking, there really isn't any asking because you're again, protecting and guarding your own heart and saying, I'm not really worth any of that. I'm not even going to ask God for that. Then God can't respond to a heart that doesn't believe he is a good father and he gives good gifts to his children. So therefore you're not understanding that you're his child, that he's bought you at a very high price, a very high price. And your faith isn't in that. It's in the person that you are before you come to know Christ. We are worth receiving good things from God. We are worth having a life that is fruitful and that represents him in a really beautiful way. We need to believe that we can have that because he has given that to us, that he's He's bought us and given us new life in him. I'm not like going down, you know, this road of, of prosperity. I'm just saying that we hold back asking him of things or asking him for good things because of that place in our heart that doesn't believe we're worth it. That's also kind of a defense mechanism as well. So that needs to change in our mindset. And another reason why that we don't receive things that we ask the Lord for is it's not time yet. Timing is very important. There's a time for this. There's a, there's a time to receive in his time the things that we are asking him for. He puts desires in our hearts. And if our hearts have pure motivation, we continue to ask in faith, full faith for these things. We need to trust that he provides them. He gives them in the right time, in the right time. A little recap here. When we come before the Lord and we ask him for, for gifts, that's something he's placed in our hearts to do. We ask him with pure motivation. We ask the Lord to purify our motivations when we ask him for good things. We also ask with full confidence and full faith that he is a father of good gifts, good and perfect gifts. We also ask without guarding our hearts. In other words, we're not going to be double-minded in our asking. And we ask with the correct mindset that he has made us worthy to receive good things from him. We also wait upon the Lord that when we ask for the things that he's put in our hearts to ask, that in his timing, he will respond. He has a perfect timing and we trust him with it. And we ask for good gifts for those around us because he will put in your heart to have faith for somebody else who cannot have faith for themselves of these good things. If we are asking him for something that is not his heart for us to have and he tells us that, we need to be open for him to say, this is not what I have for you. I have something else in plan for you that is also good and perfect for you. So a lot of this, when we ask our father for good gifts, is a trusting his heart. A lot of this is trusting his heart, trusting that he has the best for us, us, that his intentions are good for us, that he has good plans for us and that he loves us and that we are made worthy because of what he's done for us because of Jesus on the cross and dying for us and resurrect. And we are no longer seen as unrighteous, but as righteous in him as his children. And we need to allow him to continue to mature us and to grow us in him so that when we do ask of things, we're not using him like a genie in a bottle. We're not using him like a genie in a bottle and coming to him for things that he can give us and then we aren't grateful or thankful for what he has done for us. So the heart is important behind the asking. The heart needs to be willing to receive the good and perfect gift that he has for you. So may this encourage you and bless you and fill you with a lot of joy and really help you believe that you are worth good things from the Lord. Like you're totally worth it. You're very valuable. You're very loved. You're very special. You're very important. How the Lord wants to respond to your asking, be open with that. Continue to trust him. And if he put something in your heart to ask for. That's a good thing. Even if your motivation isn't quite there yet in the place that it needs to be, the Lord will help you know how to be aware of it. And then he is going to also be the same one that purifies that motivation, if, if that makes any sense. I think I've talked enough and I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good day. Bye.